So let's talk a little bit about menopause and weight. Um, again, because we're a women's gym, I do like to talk a lot about, you know, women's issues, women's bodies. That's why we do pelvic floor. That's why, you know, I talk about menopause a lot. That's why I talk about PCOS and, you know, endometriosis and like things around like our clock and not like men's clocks and things like that. You know, how to sync your cycle with your workouts and nutrition and all of that. So just, you know, adding on top of that, we're going to talk again about menopause and weight because I know a lot of you are like, oh man, I just can't like, uh. And it's like going through another puberty, you know, we go through puberty when you're in your teens, you go through like a second one in your 20s, and then you hit menopause, and then boom, again, huge body changes. So we go through all of these body changes all of the time as women, and you know, men don't have to deal with that. Uh, but we get the opportunity to engage in it. Um, so you know, as you get older, you're going to notice that maintaining usual weight is going to become difficult. And a lot of women gain weight around perimenopause and menopause. And, and menopause. Um, so kind of what happens is like you have a huge slowdown in metabolism. So it's like a sloth-like metabolism. So even if you're eating the same pretty much healthy diet that you've been eating, you're more likely to still gain weight from it because your metabolism has slowed down. So what causes that? Um, again, hormone changes is going to be a big one um because of estrogen. So many women in perimenopause and early postmenopause years gain fat mass as their estrogen levels drop. Um and the women of childbearing age tend to store fat in your lower body. So thinking like more pear shaped, it's more like pooch and like butt and hips. And then postmenopausal women store fat more in your abdomen. So think more like the apple shape. So it's closer to like up here versus like down under your belly button. Um, and muscle mass also has things to do with it. So as you age, so for every 10 years, you're losing a specific percentage of muscle mass. So unless you're working hard to keep that, to minimally keep the muscle mass that you had, if not create more of it, especially because of the lowering of metabolism with menopause and just also regular aging, um, you have to keep up with that in order to be eating the same way that you are and doing the same things that you do. Um, genetic factors are also going to play a role. If your parents or your other close relatives carry extra weight around your abdomen, you're likely to do the same just due to genetic reasons. Um, and then other factors like lack of exercise, unhealthy eating, not sleeping enough, um, snacking more, age, number of children that you had, uh, the use of antidepressant or antipsychotic medications only because those also have weight gain in their like descriptions of side effects. Um, chemotherapy, again, that lowered metabolic rate and altered lifestyle. Sometimes we like to eat out more, you know. Um, so what's kind of the best way to prevent weight gain during after menopause? So there really isn't a magic formula for preventing or reversing the weight gain. Um, you're just going to stick to like the basics. So making sure you're engaging in regular and sustained aerobic activity, whether that's walking or slow jog or anything like that for 30 to 60 minutes on most of the days. Make sure that you're building and maintaining your muscle math with strength training. Um, again, that does require fuel for your body. So if you're not eating enough, you're not going to be able to lift heavy. You're not going to be able to grow that muscle mass. Um, and again, it's kind of a 50-50 shot depending on how your metabolism is. Your metabolism may be slow because you're not eating enough. It may be slow because you're a chronic yo-yo yo -yo dieter. It may be slow because you're also in menopause. You could have all three. Um, but we need to make sure that we're still fueling our bodies to lift the heavy weights. Um, also, another one is just accepting the changes to your body that are age-related and working toward decreasing your risks by taking healthy lifestyle measures. So, you know, it's like, okay, yes, I know my body is going to go through this change. Yes, I know that I may gain weight from it, but I am still eating really healthy. And I'm, you know, I'm working out three times a week. I'm walking every day and I'm taking those active lifestyle changes to make sure that I stay healthy. And regardless of if that weight goes down or not, at least you are still a healthy individual because we need to remember that weight does not equal health. It does not. Um, again, look at the big picture. You can't avoid your metabolism slowing down. It's going to happen with age. It's going to happen with menopause. Um, but like we can control the things like, oh, I have this recurring knee pain or this recurring hip pain or this recurring shoulder pain. 
that's interfering with like what I want to do and how I want to exercise and like identifying those hurdles if we're not already living a healthy lifestyle to create that healthy lifestyle. And that could also be like your busy caregiving schedule or things like that. Um, you know, structure your meals. Make sure you're eating regularly so we're not having the blood sugar going up and down with those spikes and those crashes. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we have a consistency throughout the day. We're following our hunger cues. We're following our satiation cues. Um, we want to avoid those crash diets um, because of the body changes that occur in our muscles. Um, because it means that you're more than likely to put on more weight when you start eating back normally again. Um, so leptin, the fat hormone, plays an important role in body weight management and as it contributes to appetite control and metabolic rate. So studies have shown that leptin levels drop after a crash diet, which increases the appetite and slows down your metabolism. Again, we don't need more things slowing down metabolism on top of age and weight and um, menopause. Um, unfortunately, yes, you may have to eat less. So maybe, you know, pre-menopause, you were able to eat 3,000 calories a day. You know, work out five days a week, walking every day, very healthy. Now you're in menopause, you may only need 2,800 now. So 200 less to just maintain what you had. And that extra 200 over time will cause that slow, gradual weight gain that, you know, you don't notice until it's 40 pounds later, um, you know, in two years down the road. And you're like, I don't know. Um... So making sure that we're paying attention to that, but the ways to do that is making sure, again, we're eating a healthy diet that's full of good micro and macronutrients. You know, we have your fat, your carb, your protein at every meal, at every snack. We're eating fruits and vegetables to fill up on fiber. We're eating good amounts of protein. We're not eating junk food. We're not eating those really, really refined carbs that cause inflammation in our body. Um, checking your sweet habit. Um, again, depending upon if you're like a really, really like sweet snack person or a savory snack person, making sure that, you know, maybe we're doing dark chocolate instead of white chocolate and doing those simple switches as well. So you're still able to satisfy your craving, but at a, in a healthier way, limiting alcohol. And also remember to seek support for everything, mental support, health support, whatever you need, seek support. People are willing to help you um, another last minute thing is actually HRT, it's hormone replacement therapy, um, which weight gain is not linked to at all. Um, some studies suggest that the use of hormone replacement therapy is associated with less fat gain and potential beneficial event effects on muscle mass. So it's pretty much replacing the estrogen that you're losing, um, and that's decreasing, um, during perimenopause, menopause, and afterward. So that would be like another option to go through if you're like, I just can't figure it out. Uh, but again, seek support with that. Ask your doctors. And that's just a little bit on uh, menopause and weight gain. Again, if you have any questions, please comment below.